warehouse of ships and whatnot that they put in harm's way to see what the reaction would be of an atomic blast. And uh, I'm sure the atomic testing was conducted predominantly in case we had to be prepared in using atomic warfare to fight alien influence. And they needed a cover story, so this was a, a, the Russians and the Cold War and everything was a, just a perfect cover story. Although it later became more than a cover story, as we all know. Uh, these particular photographs also show small uh, dots and dashes, as I would say. And all of them have been confirmed. Now this black system here in the atomic cloud uh, is actually time being ripped up, uh, of course, the atmosphere and the clouds and everything, and then time being warped by the initial blast itself, and that's by neutrinos going through and ionizing space, uh, ionizing the atmosphere and, and uh, whatnot, but exceeding the speed of light, so you produce an antimatter background and you get into total blackness. And of course, here we have another UFO similar to the ESG. Once again, uh, we haven't been told the truth on any of this. Uh, yeah. been, and right here, also in this picture, in the bombing of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, this is of Nagasaki. Down at the bottom, we see the characteristic human face, uh, which is typical, typical of all A-bomb explosions over populated areas. You will always find a human face at the bottom of the uh, mushroom cloud. Now, nobody really knows if this is just by coincidence or uh, the makeup of the cloud or whatever. But these little dots and dashes, these white dots and dashes, are receding at better than 30,000 miles per hour. And there are UFOs leaving the scene. Japan was infested with them. They, uh, their Navy had counted better part of 2 million of them uh, toward the closing the end of World War II. Once again, it's all part of an alien attack of planet Earth. It's been going on steadily since World War II era. It's still going on, only now it's subverted into, into large quantity, large uh, groups of human beings being actually abducted and implanted. And that's according to the Roper Report, which is part of the Remington Rand Corporation, uh, who did the reporting, the Bigelow Holding Company. Now they're in a third generation report, and of that third generation report uh, that was sent out to all the clinical psychologists uh, in the United States, 110,000 of them, uh, uh, stated that basically women are being raped uh, by aliens. And I know as, as fantastic as that sounds, it's backed up by John Mack, Harold Wire. Uh, an MD as well as a uh, clinical uh, person. Uh, there's other, there's a, uh, John Mack is the most famous, uh, but uh, there's uh, some 90 concerned psychiatric scientists who are uh, trying to form an organization to uh, uh, prevent secrecy on the subject because it, they have mentioned this is nothing but government sponsored rape. 99.3% are women, 0.7 uh, or 7 tenths of 1% are men uh, that are abducted and implanted. So it's predominantly a uh, female, female uh, type uh, uh, monitoring system. So once again, the alien agenda is, is to disturb the natural progress of, of the human race and uh, two alien agenda uh, means. And of course, there's another thing to mention, any outer space alien, regardless of who they are, how benevolent or how, how evil they are, they're, they're a biological hazard because we have no defense against their germs. Absolutely none. In fact, they can kill us just by, just by being around. Uh, I developed something like jungle right I still got it on my feet and on my back, and because of the Dulce New Mexico thing, uh, I get free hospitalization for the rest of my life. I think I'm a good guinea pig, I guess. Uh, but theoretically, that's from being around inside.
inside that cave at that particular time. Uh, that's the first time I've told any of these people that, but that's basically what it's all about. Um, uh, different time here. Uh, well, we've talked about the dumb bases and the black projects predominantly. Um, alien agenda. Um, I would like to speak to another subject it's called strategic defense initiative. Of course, this could very easily be, as mentioned by my late friend Ronald Rummer Rummel, who was murdered, incidentally, by the three people inspired to kill him. Uh, one person did the killing. One was a uh, NSA officer, and one was an alcohol back on firearms officer, both are in custody as we speak. The third gentleman is fighting extradition. He's in Czechoslovakia. Uh, most likely able to uh, successfully fight extradition because uh, they don't follow the U.S. law very well. Uh, anyway, the strategic defense initiative is probably, instead of uh, preventing incoming missiles, although they're now that uh, most nations have uh, favored and otherwise have nuclear missile technology. Uh, uh, it's probably some form of uh, outer space defense, defense against outer space attack, and uh, you know, it's pretty primitive indeed, but it's better, better than nothing. And the second part of my talk will be aliens and the alien agenda. I've already touched on that. Old alien bases. Uh, and like I said, Bikini Island, according to what was uh, studied after the A-bomb blast, that the, some of the caves that were infested with uh, out-of-place artifacts dealing with UFOs uh, and other kinds of paraphernalia had, had rock forming around them. So they had been basically an alien junkyard on the in shallow seas for probably the better part of 10,000 years. So they've been around. That you might call an old alien base. Del Sey, New Mexico is another old alien base where kind of a, a, a botryoidal or clear agate had formed over some of the uh, parts uh, laying on the floor of, of the existing base. And uh, it takes an extremely long period of time for geologically speaking for this to form. Uh, uh, the aliens have probably been here the better part of at least a half a million and maybe as much as several million years. Although I have artifacts here which show uh, uh, artifacts that you know, like a small turbine looking at device sitting in 220 million year old fossil coral and I also have uh, alien metals which are present in, in other uh, kinds of rock formations including a piece of petrified wood where an insect had basically burrowed a hole around one of its limbs and then something had literally like a laser had literally sliced through it but the cambium or the or the uh, or the actual layers of the wood had bent as the beam burned its way through it. I've got that in here too, as well as an original piece of uh, um, instantly petrified, uh, uh, looks like a garlic root that was found in, in and around Area 51. And uh, this particular piece of garlic type plant was instantly petrified, contains the same exact chemical structure of the quartz crystal the quartz crystal only grows in a certain left-handed uh, crystal pattern, and that same pattern is extant on, on fossil, uh, instantly petrified or fossilized plant life uh, of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's identical, chemically identical. So, uh, anyway, the next part of this, the second part of the talk are treaties. Basically, there were four different distinct treaties made through the United States government from the from the alien encounter. The first one was in 1944. The second one was 1954. The third one was in 1965. 
third one was 1962, the fourth one was 1979. Uh, I'll go backwards. The 1979 treaty uh, was a total violation of, uh, uh, incidentally, in Dulce, New Mexico, where I got badly hurt. Uh, 66 Secret Service and Delta, Delta Force people lost their lives. 22 of which were uh, on loan from other countries, uh, Israel, Germany, uh, Norway, and, uh, South Africa, I remember. I was the only geologist, geological engineer down there to analyze the situation. Uh, the government almost basically lied to us. They kind of said that alien presence might be there, but they didn't tell us that they knew that there was an alien base and that they had already, already attempted to uh, make contact. And of course, this was disturbing indeed. In fact, uh, a couple of the engineers who managed to survive uh, put the project under duress. Another part of the talk are the intelligence community. The Nazi group, the World War II Nazi or Hitlerian group, Fatherland Intelligence Agency trained our CIA, our OSS, which became our CIA, and other intelligence communities <coughs> predominantly, and are still being employed today as we, today, as we, in quote, the federal government today uh, trains uh, uh, Bosnian troops on American soil, and from what I understand, that's totally illegal, um, and that's another topic. The third part of the talk is uh, the types of aliens. Uh, the large gray that I, sh two large grays that I shot and killed. Uh, I can't tell you how ugly they were, and I can never tell you how graphic the stench was. But in the cave, there were large cauldrons or tanks looked like a big uh, oval cattle feeding tank, but they weren't. They were a special, looked like a stainless steel or metallic tank. And they were filled with alien uh, and human uh, body parts, and generally glands, and what looked like some kind of blood. Uh, uh, I've always been taught that blood after a few minutes starts to congeal, but this was, uh, was one of these uh, vessels that in the melee had tipped over and all this bloody liquid and spilled out with the mess and it was definitely not coagulated. Uh, how they did this is anybody's guess. So if we remember anything about cattle mutilations, we might also think that the, basically the blood in, the, in these cattle are totally drained out. Uh, there's no blood around, no blood around in quote the murder scene of, of, the, of the cattle. So, so this might be the way they're doing it. Now, whether this is uh, sponsored by our government or other governments is, uh, is, a good, is a good guess. If it were up to me, I'd say yes, we're in the thick of it. We made a pact with the aliens, and therefore we must know what their agenda is. And, and uh, also, the federal government must also further know that if they keep the big lie going, they must be in the thick of it in the worst way. And, if that's the case, they are, they are an enemy of you know, gross concern. Who is we? We, in quotes, the federal government. The Department of State. Department of State, uh, Department of the Air Force, Navy, Army, Marine Corps, basic uh, force services, plus uh, the military policing facilities, and the FBI and all that. They're all hooked into the Black Projects as a whole. In this part of the Black Projects, uh, there's kind of like an outer sphere of normal Black Projects, like building and everything from these kind of aircraft here, uh, and doing these kind of experiments here, uh, to building aircraft like this, uh, places like this. And that's kind of on the outside, and on the inside, on the inside of this circle, we get a, a tighter group of people who really know what the main agenda is, 
maybe even the enslavement of the human race as a remnant, uh, as or or something in as a scenario like that, and then finally a third category whereby whereby none of the other two categories would even even hint at the possibility or the horror of what's happening. And it's a very compartmentalized system. I can only begin to guess, even though that I've been in the thick of things from the outer core to the second core level, but I have no idea what's in the third core level. No way at all. And because it's so complicated, I've heard some of this run by me. It's so fantastic. It makes a Star Wars or a movie or a, or a uh, Star Trek novel, or a Babylon 5 novel, it's like a kid's toy. I mean, it's too fantastic for me to believe. So. I can I can assume that uh, other it might be a, a other worldly uh, plan or scenario for taking over the planet. But once again, I can't prove it, so I don't talk about it right here. I'm only basically to discuss basically what I know of the alien agenda and through deep underground military base. The application of that idea during, uh, during this kind of activity for the U.S. government. Uh, I'll have a question and answer period in a short time. I've already talked about uh, old firefights. Um, I will tell you right now, I'm breaking major federal law, I'm breaking my entire security oath system. Uh, security oath, in fact, here's a copy of my 1985 security clearance. You might zoom in on that here too. Can you do that? Yeah. yeah. Tell me when. Okay. And of course, it's got a picture of me. It's got the Department of the Air Force. It's got uh, a control number here. It's got a digital control number and name here. It's got a UPC stripe here. It's got a level L. Uh, that was only issued to people that worked at Grim Lake and Area S4 and our restricted zone R4808E. This is a computer chip camera in the card itself. You didn't wear the card like you had, you wore another security card. This one wasn't worn. This was used to get you into the main gate. And there was a large machine. There was I draw it. There was a large machine that looked like a Kind of like a, uh, uh, a curved. Uh, the bottom part you put the card in, and uh, you put your thumbprint on. You're supposed to actually. Some of them have two of them. Uh, I don't have a second thumb, so this one was made of one. There's normally two here in the L. The normal person would be up through the UPC stripe. So there was one, and I put my thumb there on the bottom, and if it would flash green, I flip the switch. And uh, then I insert the card in the second part of the uh, control unit, and there would be a thing that would hold my forehead, and I could block off my left eye and stick this thing up to my up to my uh, right eye and take a picture of my retina. And then if the green light went off, it would I could remove my card and I could leave it at the guard shack and I'd wait for anywhere from 45 minutes to several hours waiting for the next shift to start. Breaking all my security oaths by coming out in the open and talking about this, because not only are we dealing with a kind of technology, I believe that we should we should uh, be out that should be out in the public. It should at least this kind of 50 and 60 year old material should be out in the public. Uh, I feel that, that in coming clean, so to speak. Uh, I don't know quite how to explain it other than the fact that when I initially was told these underground bases were, were for uh, you know, security uh, in case of nuclear attack in the United States, and uh, it was a total lie. When I found out that aliens were actually entrenched in half of these bases, and uh, these bases, by the way, cost a minimum of $17 billion a piece. The black budget garners $508 billion a year. 
$1.023 trillion every two years. That's two-year-old information. It's probably more like $1.3 trillion now, which is about one quarter of the gross national product of the United States. It's no wonder why our economy is kind of up and down here and there. Uh, once again, you might ask, well, how in the heck uh, we've only been told, uh, we the public have only been told there, there's a total defense budget of $447 billion, so how can that be $500 billion going on behind the scenes? First of all, black budget means hidden budget. Hidden budget is totally hidden from congressional view and oversight, it cannot be audited uh, by the U.S. Treasury system at all. It is a separate, independent taxing body entity within the federal government structure, which, by the way, is illegal, totally illegal. It's primarily financed by drug operations by the CIA and the NSA and the Drug Enforcement Administration, and now the FBI is implicated also. Uh, recently, there was an FBI man who came out of the cold, so to speak, and told all only to find himself uh, murdered, and he took a vacation in England and himself murdered. That was in the paper about three years ago. Anyway, nine attempts on my life have been taken all since the first of January of this year. Well, I've been shot at, been run off the road three times I've been run off the road, one of which is uh, I'm a very good driver. I used to race cars, for somewhat of a hobby type living. Uh, I used to race everything from Formula One on down, uh, motorcycles and stuff like that when I was a kid, so I lived kind of, kind of on the edge all the time. Uh, so I became a very good driver, a very defensive driver, and so if somebody's trying to run me off the road, uh, like before my Vegas talk, I dropped a friend of mine off at 29 Palms area and saw another friend in, in the uh, Marine Corps hospital who's dying of cancer. And on the way out of there, you have to go, you have to skirt around a whole mountain range. You just can't take the easiest way and a straight line out would be nice. It doesn't work that way. I have to skirt around these mountains. And, uh, I had a Ford Taurus with a police interceptor motor and uh, roughly an 8 liter motor, which is a monster. And um, the, uh, there were two long E350, Ford E350 vans, and they all had uh, uh, Air Force markings on them. They were, uh, they all had guns and they were all shooting and they were missing and, and uh, I flew by them and took a picture of their, uh, as a blur, I took a picture of them, got a very good picture of their license plate and uh, then, they, then they sped up and tried to, try to squeeze me in this way and then finally I just slid right in the middle of the road and the road was wide enough for basically one way traffic and one of them went over, rolled over and going down for about three or four hundred feet down a very steep ravine. The other one was a shallow ravine about ten feet deep. And um, I just kind of peered over, got my, got my hook my seatbelt, peered over, and there was a big fire started on down there. I could hear people screaming, but I'm sorry, that's their, their deal. I just kept on going. That was one way. Uh, recently, I got shot at when I was with a retired FBI agent. We were going to go to a Patriot talk show down near Salem, Oregon. And I got shot here, here, and here. It's what's called a CIA cocktail. Uh, uh, I don't have normal ribs after Dulce, New Mexico fiasco, where my ribs are burnt, cauterized, my fingers are burnt off of me, uh, etc. I have a plastic plate in here, a nylon plate that really has bumps on it, looks like ribs and everything, so those bullets just kind of just lodged in this thick, five eighths inch thick plastic, you know, movable plastic thing. And the inside, 
and uh, uh, that was dug out. And, uh, and once again, here I am recuperating from another problem. And all because I'm trying to bring the American public, and I love my country more in my life, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this ridiculous group of things uh, by coming clean. But I, I feel I have to because the American public is not only been lied to, but when I was asked to, um, by the intelligence community within the Air Force to uh, uh, continue my operations and black budget work, uh, stealthy work, uh, what would I think if I, if they said that I would be betraying the American public, I told them to go fly it, go stuff it or whatever. And it says I won't be a party to that. And I walked out of the room. And somebody tried to tell me to come back, and I said, it's out of my face, fella. You're on the ground. And you would get out of my face, and I went on the ground. And I walked away, and then uh, I made a decision. And I'll say bye. And that's why I'm here talking. I also want to get a little political sided here, although I don't like to. Uh, right now, we have an out of touch, runaway federal government structure that really doesn't care about the way you and I feel. Uh, they manipulate evidences of crimes as in several instances, both in, both in Waco and other. Uh, the Waco hearings should have been a wake-up call to most who were watching, even if they'd only watched a piece of it. Um, it's once again pros the federal government structure is uh, just running away with everybody's freedom and uh, they run roughshod over. They've actually become kings and queens over us. And our forefathers told us exactly what would happen if we, if we took a certain stand, if we, if we made laws to legislate God out of our system, we would have a similar problem. If we made laws or, or had too many people making laws within our government structure, we would have a similar problem that we're facing today. We're facing a form of uh, tyranny and totalitarianism. Incidentally, I might want to throw a few statistics by you, and it's quite provable in a number of talks given recently, uh, both by the United Nations and others. The United Nations is entrenched in our country. They're training our troops. So our, our troops are being trained by the United Nations in the United States, and I think that's kind of an oddball system. Uh, Russian troops are being trained of basically Montana and uh, North Dakota and the northern tier states, Washington, upstate Washington, etc. Uh, there's a stockpiling of Russian uh, tanks and hardware by the U.S. Army. For what purpose? Also, there we have purchased uh, at, uh, at the cost of uh, some thirty-eight billion dollars all the Russian nerve gas. Nerve gas is uh, uh, their nerve gas is extremely long shelf life. We're destroying our own nerve gas, which has a relatively short shelf life, of fifteen years. But the Russian variety is extremely deadly, and also uh, I'll tell you something else about that: the Russian nerve gas is primarily of, of glandular secretions uh, and they even mentioned that, uh, as they were downing flying saucers within their own uh, country they found a way of making chemical weapons from some of the uh, alien uh, alien cadavers and that kind of thing like that so from some of the uh, uh, some of the glandular excretions so once again biological weapons against the people of the United States. Uh, there have been other talks given by other people alluring to this, including Ted Gunderson, who's an ex-FBI agent, who got tired of the federal government tromping on him. And, and another uh, ex-astronaut by the name of James uh, James Groden, not, not the Groden of uh, Alternative 3 uh, book fame, but this is another book. Uh, a number of key government people have started coming out slowly, but unfortunately it's at a snail's pace. I'm the only one that ever worked 
and have a level three security clearance that came out from the cult, so to speak, and completely laid everything open to the American or any public. Uh, something like this was tried in Britain and in France with the person that uh, jail. Incidentally, uh, I can't be charged with espionage theoretically because uh, according to our one person who said, oh, that, this place doesn't exist. Well, it's on an aerial map. It's kind of different. Uh, if it doesn't exist, then I'm just full of, you know what, a hype and a hooey, so to speak, and, uh, and uh, I'm just crazy or something like that. And so be it. And if it doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. Uh, how can I be charged with a crime on something that doesn't exist? Another thing is that uh, uh, to be guilty of espionage, you have to sell four dollars or cents or some form of monetary gain the information that you impart. I'm not doing that in any way, shape, or form. The talk, the lecture, is accounted. It's actual exchange of money by another individual for the information or that there's proscribed information. Well, I'm going to be getting out a few alien artifacts here. I'll let you take a look, and you're welcome to kind of stretch your legs a little bit and see. There are also some here, so you can see what I'm talking about. You look at very carefully, and I'll leave my hand lens out for you to take a peek. By the way, when you use his hand lens, you want to get right up on the object like this. You'll see a line going straight through with the wood layers, the cambium, coming this way as whatever went through it, went, burnt through it. It's very interesting. Awesome. And there's another out of place artifact of blue parts, so to speak. This is another fossil. This is at one time a cave mushroom, uh, a fossil plant. It's something cut it absolutely perfectly, like a, like a laser cut right through the thing. And part of it slid off, and it later got perfectly petrified, similarly to the Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bomb test with a similar signature. Here's this petrified, instantly petrified garlic plant. Incidentally, this is 65 to 100 million years old. This is 105 to 130 million years old. This is roughly 30 million years old. It has the exact chemical makeup and structure of quartz crystals formed on, it, on its surface and on the internal structure of the plant itself, which this, the top part, of course, the, the sprout is all broken off. This is the sprout underneath it. And uh, the quartz crystals are identical to material found at Hiroshima and Nagasaki after we talk spot. Uh, here's a bottle of, uh, of uh, the RAM coating of the black jets. Of course, when they're, they come in after their mission, they're glowing uh, red hot, and they drip this stuff, particular material, off on this uh, Inco tarmac. This isn't tar, it's a special cement, and it just drips. And maybe some of these aircraft, uh, you might see drip spots like here and here and there and, and different places. So this is the material, it's like lava that drops off of it. It also contains certain alien elements alien reproduced elements. Here's a piece of fossil coral from Jordan uh, having a small uh, particular uh, uh, non-fossil. Uh, it isn't a crinoid. You might be, some of you might know what a crinoid, fo crinoid fossil is. It's kind of like an underwater uh, uh, lily or plant, seawater lily, but it, this isn't it. This is actual machined out part, similar to a rotor fan, a miniature rotor fan, 
there's a small engine right there. This is Elman 123, which is uh, also in topoline. Topoline and Elman 123, they're very much heavier than uranium. They're island of stability elements. They're, uh, 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 by the way, these pieces of metal I've purchased with my own money when I worked for the government. As if they were test samples, they never bothered to pick them back up, nor did they pay me back for them. So they're my property. My property. Um, but it's a golden orange metal. Uh, the pure metal is, is, is pure gold and orange, and like lead, you can just carve it. It's a very peculiar metal indeed. Totally stable, cannot be, cannot be isotoped. Element 123 with an atomic weight of about 320, and uh, here it is. It's almost twice the weight of uranium. Where did that come from, Phil? Um, that was uh, formed down at Dulce, New Mexico, and also there were scrap heaps and scrap piles of it in around uh, Tom Pulp Test Range, which is uh, uh, here. Tom Pulp Test Range is actually a Lake, so. Is that metal from our soil? Is it metal from our soil? No. This is an alien. This is a, two alien elements. And here, if I might show you, uh, the I thought I had some. Uh, yeah, here we go. This periodic chart was developed by a number of scientists anonymously. Don't want their name revealed. Um, of course, all we're familiar with is element 103, and that's been around for a long time. And a couple of these were made in Russia. These that don't have any name, uh, they've, they're very short-lived indeed. Element 109 to 110 also. But after, from 111 to 140, these are all elements that were uh, garnered off of uh, uh, alien attack vehicles or alien spaceships or flying saucers when they were taken apart. Now, topoline is here, uh, element 117, and element 123 is myrnite. It's a combination of both those, an extremely hard substance capable of standing temperatures in excess of of uh, 9,500 degrees Fahrenheit to as much as uh, 14,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, this piece of material is uh, it's a kind of in a Florida Lee pattern. Uh, this kind of material is lighter than lithium. Of course, lithium is number three. I might want to point out it's number three on the scale. It's, uh, it's, an earth, it's a terrestrial element, but this is somewhere between two and three, between helium and lithium. It also is an alien element. It's what they call a mixture, an admixture element. It's extremely light, and uh, it's uh, used in the airframes of all black jets, and F-117A, B-2, uh, and B-1, B-2, and uh, B-30, uh, or or the uh, Aurora series, and it comes in a scalenohedral crystalline form, which is alien. It's kind of a dead giveaway. Here's a tabular scalenohedral crystalline form, four times the hardness of a diamond, four times the tensile strength, capable of withstanding temperatures in excess of 45,000 degrees Fahrenheit before chemical breakdown. It is used in the window frag, uh, the small slit windows there in the underbellies and the blackened out windows uh, of the actual cockpit, although most of these uh, pilots fly blind, they, they don't ever see anything from the ground. So this kind of, a, that's also an alien material, and it is uh, element, uh, if I remember right, it's element uh, 113. Here is another alien uh, element formed in the confines of zero, uh, outer space. Uh, you might ask, what are we space shuttling with all our shuttle missions? Of course, we're being lied to every time they talk or open their lips. 
Uh, their mouth. Uh, the same crystalline structure is here as well as it is here. This material is the hardness of a diamond. It's also used in the uh, rotor and propeller shafts uh, of propellered aircraft or, or and or uh, rotor aircraft. Uh, it's also used in high speed drills and other kinds of things like that, which are, are used to uh, make uh, holes in, in metals that cannot be touched with a welding torch. And this, of course, is, is a hunk of metal. And I have a real treat here. When I was 14 years old, I was with my father who was talking to a Sir Johnny Rollins, uh, Sir Johnny H. Rollins, who was a, a British naval sea lord. And he had collected some of the crash retrieval uh, objects of the uh, of the infamous uh, uh, Roswell uh, crash, and these are actually little bits of the skin uh, that have. Uh, and of course, if you remember the skin; you couldn't you couldn't bend it or, or cut it or anything. The way they did this, of course, they dropped uh, liquid nitrogen on it, and uh, they used a they used a hammer technique of, of shattering it, and it became brittle. But once again, it's composed of nothing but alien elements, which are, by the way, not we're not able to understand where these this particular element come, elements come from in the skin. It's the, thick, the thickness of the sheets of paper you're writing on, and, uh, and that's all that's needed to be meteor proof and missile proof and everything else. And these things have crashed, of course, and they've also been shot down by luck predominantly, uh, not by skill, and I'll let you look at that, but I, you can handle these other things, but don't handle this. If you say they could shot down, Phil, how would they have done that? With a charge particle? Charge, charge, charge particle and a beam weapon, as well as a uh, rail gun. A reusable rail gun. And, uh, if that works, they're going to stop them to spray it out. No, not really. A rail gun is, uh, is an electronic gun that shoots a projectile at about 25,000 miles an hour, much faster than any rifle. I'll have a question and answer period. You can come up, take a look at these artifacts. Uh, here's a couple of magazines. Uh, spotlight. Uh, anyway, uh, there's the Alien Digest, I've got my friend killed here, some of my father's notes. Those are blanks there, but uh, um, there's the famous popular science about secret airbase. By the way, if it doesn't exist, huh, how come they printed it? Uh, here's the Nazi saucer. That was done by Vladimir Chizursky, who was a, who was a Russian uh, uh, space engineer. Some Fame. Here's a new periodic chart of the elements. And go ahead and look through it. Incidentally, uh, here is a unique uh, piece of hardware too. It's an ordinary gold watch. Uh, the only thing unique about this particular gold watch is that it's a Waltham, but on the back, on the reverse, uh, it's made in Montauk, New York just happened to be used by my dad in the Philadelphia experiment. And it happens to be keeping a rather accurate time. Anyway, I need a seat and uh, I'll let you look. Can we get one of the heaviest Actually, heaviest is the myrtonite, that kind of gold, gold looking material. Be very gentle with these, these aren't normal specimens. And hand, uh, one person handling one piece at a time. Can we get a period of turn like that? Yes, I'll do it. These are four dollars a piece. Okay, I'll take one. And uh, oh, a year ago, these were secret. Above top secret. By the way, here's your. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Let's see what this is for. After we take a look, and we'll ask you to take your seat, and we'll have a question and answer period. 
then I'll wrap it up. Aerial maps are two dollars from one of those. Those are actual aerial maps used in Green Lake, and those were made in 1966. Also have uh, portfolios of uh, selected selected pictures of the atomic bomb blasts uh, in Bikini, as, as well as Dal Thor. And if there's some of them need labeling, I'll label them for you after the talk. Do you have one like that? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I do this I can, so. Take a look inside of that, inside of that canyon, so to speak. Put in an interesting formation. See how the uh, wood fibers have just literally been separated. Yeah, that's right. Of course, you've heard about straws and going through telephone poles uh, after a tornado. Well, um, maybe this was that kind of a thing, although it seems to be remote. Are those $20? Yeah, these are $20, and they're a select group. Is there a great Well, I'll tell you what, what you, you, I'll just throw this in. How about that? There's a select group of pictures, uh, like here at the, here at the street, uh, saucers leaving ground zero. I have other ones sort of marked uh, with the uh, USS Eldridge. This is, by the way, is the USS Eldridge uh, ready room. It's a ready room aboard the USS Eldridge. I think I'll be like, we'll verify that. And um, that's one of their, I think, how many, how many ready rooms? Is Al here? Yeah, How many okay. ready rooms were aboard the USS Eldridge? Theoretically, two. Two. I only knew of one because that's the only one I ever went in. Okay. The lecturing varied between various lectures. Yeah, it lists the people. Like there's different people. Not all the people, although you can do your homework and probably find that out. Probably find that out. These are going after this talk. These placards are going to be duplicated on the special paper sent to the United States Senate and of which these pictures will not only be totally declassified but will be out in public domain. Okay. And if uh, anything's not marked, if I haven't marked, I'll try and uh, identify them for you. I could give you a map of the room that also Sure, I'll be sure about that. Sent them to me at the Aurora Drops. 
uh, sent to me by the base commander over there. Because uh, I did enough work on this. I don't know what I mean. I don't know what I mean. I don't know what I mean. Anyway, uh, the radar absorbent material. This product? Yeah. Incidentally, you can take your portfolios and copy the actual Joint Army Navy Task Force language under those photographs, and that's the official language. I've, I've stuck my own word in here. Do you have all of them? Do you have all of them? Yes, well, I don't have all of them, but there's a select group. Um, uh, we will look through it and see the different ones that are selected. You know, that's exactly two years ago, you said, yeah. We got an A-bomb disease, they plastic in there. Some of the first, uh, we got a lot of talent for that. Don't think. 
my school teachers, you're right, do not think. Higher education is a joke. Um, was, do you need this anymore here? Was that the bond and uh, these are the gold fusion? Yeah. And your point was that it was valid? That they, it was very valid. It was proven. Uh, uh, the people uh, he donated the award to Greenpeace at the end of it all. Anyway, the award was $140,000 uh, for their discovery. And the uh, U.S. military said, no, you can't, you can't do this. And now they're working with Cold Fusion in Japan. The information is forbidden to be told to the public of the United States. Once again, we're traded as babies and children by our federal government structure and told that and lied to and saying that this is a bunch of I believe. I'll tell you folks, if we don't do some serious changing and talking and talking in groups, maybe in small groups like I'm doing, but maybe not coming, you know, I'll have to come clean and come out of the woodwork, so to speak. But you have to talk in groups of what you learn. And if you do this, uh, uh, word of mouth is a wonderful thing. Uh, and uh, from that, uh, we might be able to uh, continue uh, and have our freedoms that we so aptly take for granted in these wonderful United States. And I've been in over 70 countries. I've never found another country as beautiful as the United States. Well, you know, Einstein, now we're going to have a question and answer period. And came to nuclear, nuclear, you can all this other. It's going to be discussed every bill of squares. Question and answers, folks. Young, let's hear them. I was reading in that underground book, you know, that I first took oh, over. Richard Souter book? Okay. Yeah. And he was talking about, well, I was, I've been interested in the underground railroad system ever since I heard Mel Bailey talk about it about a few years ago. I know Bill the Tunnel. But in the book, they don't tell anything about the newer <coughs> uh, drills that build the tunnels. There are no drills. There's no drills. No drills. It's a uh, nuclear boring machine. It's a nuclear, nuclear boring machine. It its way to the literally melts or deflagrates the rock and it, to an extremely fine powder, melts it, and sticks it on the walls. But he Nitrified. said in the book that he didn't know if they had ever went ahead and made that uh, machine. Well, the machine's existing, but I, I can tell you even who uh, Krupp of West Germany made the machine. He had no pictures of the later of that machine. What he had was more of the obsolete machine. Even the obsolete equipment can drill seven, uh, up to seven miles a day. And uh, we once again, we've been lied to when they say a quarter of a mile a day. Even through solid rock. Even yeah. through solid rock. Yes, sir. Seven miles a day. Even if they, they have to take the material out and haul it away, there's nothing to take out. There's another, nothing to take out to speak of. It's all, it's all vaporized. Here's another piece of titanium metal mixed with alien elements. Very hard material. Doesn't break. And it's uh, used in all of the black jets. Stealth aircraft. Stealth aircraft. What was the the uh, big mercury mines that were found by Las Vegas? Why were they confiscated? Mm, they run very deep. For one thing, they were used for uh, everything from atomic waste disposal to uh, 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 putting uh, bad news aliens in making a little jail out of it, I guess, if you wanted to call it that. Uh, it's a good way of, uh, once again, hiding the problem from the public. 
So it's tied into the underground system where the mines were? Yeah, absolutely. Or they were just, where were they by? They were out, outside of uh, Las Vegas, I've heard. Uh, they're over near Mercury, Nevada. You were talking about 129 on the underground bases and about half of them being used to house the aliens. What are the other half used for? The other half are used strategically uh, uh, by different military organizations, mostly uh, Army and Air Force and uh, Navy, uh, for uh, research and development laboratories predominantly, and also uh, medical research and development laboratories and chemical weapon laboratories. Once again, these bases have been built unceasingly, day and night, since 1940. And if you add up all the bases, all the cost of all the bases, it's uh, pretty close to a quadrillion dollars. How can they keep this so deep in the public? So uninformed, well, it's pretty especially easy. the people that live around the area. It's pretty easy to keep it away from the public. Uh, they've done a real good job of it, uh, with the exception of people like myself that come out of the woodwork. Uh, so to speak, uh, the public beliefs believes the lie, the big lie. Of course, you know the old tro uh, the old adage about lies is you have to keep telling them to keep and and then you get you get to a point in time where you believe them to such a degree that uh, you become part of the lie. You live the lie. Is this where they do their cloning? Supposedly, a lot of these things are. Horrific beyond degree. Uh, you know, traumatic events that I went through uh, caused me to get professionally taken care of by at Bethesda Naval Hospital, among other places. And uh, uh, that gave me something like. Uh, uh, battle stress or delayed stress syndrome. I learned to uh, slowly work my way out of that. It was not easy. What's going on in Weld County, Colorado with them um, having a lot of changes and also having the most cattle mutilations in the whole world? Cattle mutilations are government-sponsored alien operations and have been since they were first started in 1967. Actually, they were probably going on much earlier. And uh, they, uh, the upshot of that was glandular, we allow the aliens to extract glandular secretions from animals, mixing them with their own. In exchange, we'll give them plutonium products for their drive, for their uh, spaceship drives, and we'll making alien elements for them, and they give us the uh, biological weapons. Isn't that a nice, horrible scenario? So this kind of stuff is uh, bad news indeed. By the way, being a U.S. citizen in good standing, I can't stand it anymore. I think we can do better. And if our government officials will not vote, will not uh, uh, keep, 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 in other words, if they keep telling us the big lie, keep reporting the big lie, I think it's time we not only vote them out, we demand them out. We impeach them out. And if we can't do that, I advocate just what our founding fathers say. The federal government structure out of control is totalitarian slavery. And we must vigorously fight them out. And of course, trouble is with revolutions, folks. They always end up killing their own people. And I don't advocate the overthrow of my government. But right now, my government is not in touch with me, or you, or anybody else. And uh, it's kind of moot after that. What again was the number of uh, estimated alien downed craft? Pretty close to 800,000 all total. 
as we speak, the Russians are shooting down two a day per province within mother motherland Russia. The southern hemisphere, six per day. The United States, one per day. And uh, Europe, one per day. It's a full-scale invasion. It's just because you don't see them over the White House. Uh, by the way, you wonder why, why don't they... Well, Billy Meyer sees them. But different. But first of all, of the 11 groups of aliens there are, four of which are benevolent, seven of which are very evil. Uh, he expound on the ones that are good or benevolent? Well, the ones purported by Billy Meyer, the Pleiadians, or Pleiadians uh, from the seven star cluster of the Pleiades, um, that's one of the groups. There's another group from the other side of Orion, another group uh, from uh, about 3,500 light years out, supposedly still with us. Uh, I don't remember their name offhand, but they're a very small individual, human-looking but childlike, but very large cranium, very large heads, uh, IQ is off the scale and they can do no wrong. They're at the angelic type there. They don't fly around with little wings or anything, but by angelic, I mean, that they can't do wrong. They physically can't do wrong. Fire. Spielberg. They weigh about 30 pounds. 18 years. Yeah. How about the fourth one? Well, the fourth one is a, is a, is a, is really two groups, and uh, they're extremely tall individuals. They're ocean predominantly ocean, uh, deep ocean, uh, they live in deep oceans and they basically harvest our, our uh, minerals and they're, they're kind of, you can sit in always in oceans of below 20,000 feet. There are these uh, two tiered antennas found, and of course our submarines have found them years and years ago. In fact, during World War II, some of the submarine uh, warfare and encountered several in very shallow depth. They didn't know it was weapon or, or whatever they were. Are the aliens our biggest threat or is our federal government the biggest threat? Both are our major threat at present time. It's bad enough we have one, we have a little one too. Does, does World County, Colorado have an underground base in that area? Colorado has three underground bases, uh, one at DIA. Uh, I believe what you mentioned, what, what was it, Weld? Weld County is the biggest, one of the biggest counties in the yeah. United States. And I believe it's in the northeastern section of that county, if I remember. And I'd have to look at a map. I can identify every 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 base on a map. I have, I have the latitudes and longitudes of such bases. By the way, if I mention that, that does entail espionage. If I mention all of them, and I cannot do that to the crowd, and I want to keep on talking as much as I can, so I'm not, that's one thing I promise to do, but I have to break my promise, and I'll tell you that I was wrong. I, I, was, I encountered something when I was back in case I could find something. You'll have to speak. I, 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 I visited. lattice or lens shaped clouds almost always predominantly uh, there are two kinds of clouds the kind if you go up to Virginia City sometime in April or May you'll see these clouds that come right up, up roaring up to a steep mountain you'll look at them and they'll just disappear you will cease to go over your shoulder it's nothing it's kind of a that's also cumulus lenticulatus A and the B 
nighttime, it almost looks as like a black uh, thunderstorm like cloud, and they always have metallic discs in the center. And if you uh, take a, a, your camera, your eye won't probably see them. The camera will pick up uh, metallic uh, uh, dots within that cloud structure, and those dots can be professionally analyzed, and you'll come up with the you'll come up with the uh, yeah, we'll come up to the conclusion of the Earth like this. This is the party ever see those clouds more than 23 miles from now. The high at that point was at least 200 air miles, straight line distance from long speed. So they were to take that I, had spotted, this I had spotted it's such near Portland, Oregon, and took pictures submitting it to a TV radio station or a TV and radio station. They're rare clouds. You never have a chance to take a picture of them. So. What causes the clouds? Well, uh, the natural formation, of course, is uh, also cumulus. They're 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 uh, extremely high cumulus cloud formation. Of course, cumulus is a building, it's a big kind of like a thunderhead or a thundercloud. Uh, air currents rushing up and. And of course, uh, with the ultra cumulus ones, balloon shaped or cookie shaped clouds, you have air currents rushing up. Is, right? Excuse me, air currents rushing up and air currents rushing down. And what they do is they compress the clouds, and, and then there's air circulation, generally in a count, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise measure. I studied weather when I was in high school. That was one of our curricula. But you've got it right there. It's a man made one of sorts. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the A bomb is a. If we're downing one a day in this country, wouldn't it seem logical that there would be more people that would be aware of debris? No, I'll tell you why. As soon as one is down, they're attacking certain northern tier state Air Force bases, predominantly. Uh, if you can get on those bases or stray onto those Air Force bases without getting a rest, good luck. But uh, if one of those craft is down, uh, they seal off the whole area, period. They being the federal government, the police and whatnot, Air Force police or whatever, air base or, or army base or tank base or whatever you got in that area, they seal off the whole area. Anybody caught in there is shot on site or they're immediately arrested and detained. By the way, a military base can circumvent the U.S. Constitution and Bill of Rights. An Indian reservation can do the same thing. Is this what our government, this was supposed to have been laid out by our founding fathers? I don't believe so. I think we can do better. I know we can do better. I also know that our present government's stature is uh, so punitive it's very reminiscent of early Nazi days with Adolf Hitler. In fact, New World Order was taken from his manifesto, so to speak, in 1933. He actually said, we will form a New World Order. Where was the third one in Colorado? He said one was DIA, the second one was at Northeastern Protocol, Weld County. One is down, I believe, uh, do you know where Telluride, Colorado is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's due east of Telluride by about 13 or 14 miles. And you can't miss it because if you take some of the side roads, you'll see uh, vented air shafts coming right out of the rock. That's typical of an underground base. Or if you're traveling along by car, by by jet, you see a truncated mountain. Remember the truncated mountain? You saw as we were curving around one of the Las Vegas, and the plane was banking like this. And I said, Hey, yeah, look at the deep underground military base. And the cockpit door was open. It says, Oh, God. And they, what they did is they did this and, and worked around, and, and just as you got your camera out. Right. <laughs> oh, I already had a picture of it. And that was, uh, by the way, one of the bases at S4 because it had circled around Area 51. That was one of the bases. So we, I actually saw it from the air instead of having about 30,000. How deep are they? They can run uh, the deepest deep underground military base is two and a half miles underground. Uh, the 
Del Sey base is two and a half miles underground. And it's pretty close to uh, 13,000 feet. 5,280 feet make a mile. Do you have any temperature or high temperature problems? No. Uh, as a matter of fact, in certain sandstones, you have to get a lower temperature than the like ground surface. Your water, water, water leaches out. Of course, that has to be sealed. Protective sealer, very difficult in some cases. By the way, this ring I'm wearing is a, has a sapphire. When you blow mountains apart, there's sapphires in mountains. I have that professionally uh, cut, uh, where it kind of is a good luck piece. It's a blonde, six ray star sapphire, American star sapphire. Been working. Yes. <laughs> you might have. I had to I had it cut and polished and, and uh, the setting made in Las Vegas. Some of my different days. Yeah. Well, you, what about when you're you're just driving along? There seems to be nothing around, and you'll see these white pipes coming out of the ground with turbines on the top. Exactly. That's Is that one. That's that's one there's, type. There's one of those in Denver. I mean, I've seen them along the highways in Denver. It's like industrial or commercial stuff over here, and then all of a sudden you see all these white tubings along the highway. Yeah. Those are air shafts. Or some of them are run very deep. Some of them are run minimum only four or five hundred feet underground. You know, you don't have to be in the military. You have to attack this. You have to very vulnerable. Plug those things up and pump some bad gas down there while having Well, I guess... Uh, I'm not a tactician, so, so. Yeah. that's 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 kind of weird. Yeah, that's one way of telling. Yes, sir. Are there any other little underground bases in Nebraska or Kansas? In every state, there's at least a two. You know what they are in Nebraska? I'd have to look on a map. I I couldn't be have uh, tell you how to. How they Big part. How they often? Air Force Base. Yeah, probably often. That's also where they took some of the alien uh, alien remains and saucer remains right off the bat off of Air Force. Okay, any more questions? One they, more question. Do they have an uh, underground base in place in Arizona? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, they do, and it's a very deep base indeed. In fact, they're going to make it deeper than any other base. They want to take it four miles now. What's it called again? Sedona. Sedona, Arizona. Is it one that's just north? A lot of the... I beg your pardon? Just northeast of there? North yes, north. just northwest. Well, that's all, folks. And I think I better leave some time for Al Bailey. And I better lunch a sandwich before, before I become an alien. <laughs> anyway, thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Had some hand on experience. By the way, there's some little metallic fragments you might be able to pick up. I don't know, they might be alien. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.